welcome to another tutorial from Sad Boy Productions on the basic elements of Keynote. I'm going to launch up Launchpad and then open up Keynote. In this welcome window you'll see a range of templates. Um, they go from basic sort of layouts and shapes um, to more funky ones like blackboard that's quite a good one for if you're looking to entertain kids um, graph paper is also quite good storyboard is good for sort of holiday stuff and portfolio is very good for well obviously portfolios as long um, as well as Vallejo that's pretty good Charcoal also, and yeah, uh, blueprints very good for architectural stuff. So if you're into like real estate and stuff like that, the main one you'll see is this gradient one, which Apple uses for its keynotes at the Worldwide Developer Conference. Um, all very nice stuff. In the bottom right hand corner here, you will see a slide size drop down box. This allows you to select the size resolution in previous versions. The higher resolution you chose, the less options you would have. But now that's all changed and all of the options are available in full HD right down to your sort of standard 800 by 600. Um, like I said, 800 by 600 to 1024 768, 12080 by 720, 1680 by 1050, and 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. For the purpose of these tutorials, I'll be using the Apple Gradient template in, in full HD, um, purely so it's easier to read on the screen. So I'm going to open that up with a double click. first thing you will notice if you're on a laptop or a small screen is that the slide won't fit into the window. However, if you're on a glorious big screen like the 27 inch iMac, you may get away with it. What you'll need to do is go to the size selection box in the bottom left of the slide viewer and scroll to fit window. Now your whole slide fits into your window. At the very bottom left you will notice a small icon with what appears to be a person in it. This adjusts the slide thumbnail size from small, medium and large. Over the top right is one of the most helpful buttons in the program. No it's not do this presentation for me, Apple are good, not God. This is Inspector, once open I like to resize my main window so I can see all of it. Note how the slide remains to fit the window. The first tab is all about the actual dynamics of the solid document, its settings and main features. None of the graphics or animations are dealt with here. You can set the document to automatically play the slideshow when it opens. Put it on a loop so it will play continuously for say a show where you need a simple movie playing with some funky features. Restart the show if it stops playing for a certain amount of time. Password protect the exit of the slideshow so if it were on a presentation it can't be exited by others and you can also password protect the opening of the document as well. With the presentation block you can set the slideshow to be a self-playing show like the ones you see on Apple devices in stores. Just under here you will find a slide size option again. So if the size isn't working for you or unnecessary, you can change it to suit your needs. The next tab is audio. First you'll notice this empty square that stands out. This allows you to drag and drop audio files to play as a soundtrack to your presentation.
So I drag my song chillers to the application and onto the square. It is now ready to play. To remove, simply drag it off the square and into a vacant space. Alternatively, you can choose from your iTunes library and search like so. Adjusting the constant volume is also easy. Lastly, you can record a soundtrack. For instance, yourself speaking. You'll see the monitor in the top left corner. When you speak, the little segments light up. You can then listen to it played back or you can delete it or edit it as I've chosen to clear it. The final tab is Spotlight. This allows the document to obtain keywords that will make it easier for Spotlight and other search facilities to find. It will also embed your author title into the document. So here I'm putting in the author, the title, and a keyword for Spotlight to look for and a small description of what it is. Next we'll look at slides. Add a new slide with the button in the top left hand corner. Then hover over Masters and click on it to drop down different templates. There are lots to choose from and edit to your liking. Um, the ones with text holders, bullet holders, picture holders as shown. Lots of different ones. Some have reflections, some are just standard. You see this one here has a reflection underneath the picture. And what we can do following this, let me just put it back to a normal one is turn on guidelines. This allows you to easily position items and objects around the slide. See how it locks on to the central lines. Next is view. This is the outline view. Any notes will come up next to those. This is just the pure slide view and the light table view for all of your slides. Easily navigatable across the entire board. So let's go back to normal slides and take a look at the text box. Very easy to maneuver and place especially with the help of the guidelines. I'm just going to undo that and take a look at shapes. Equally as easy to use as text boxes are. Very easy to manipulate and move about. Next is tables, which I will talk about in a later tutorial. And they're also very easy to set up. Just undo that. And also colors. These, this little window helps you adjust the colours of shapes and colour bars and charts and stuff. Finally is full screen mode, a nice new feature for 99% of the apps on OS X Lion. However, Inspector turns into a floating window, which I do not like. If you're wondering where the menu bar's gone, do not be afraid. Just push your cursor to the top of the screen and it will drop down automatically. Now I'm going to add some text to my slide to 
in the series of tutorials that I will be doing on Keynote. Obviously with a double click as it says quite clearly. Well, that's slightly embarrassing, spelling your own name wrong in your own tutorial. Just correct that. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this helpful and easy to understand. Message me with suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you very much.